handmade tortellini blanketed in a rich, cheesy sauce. I got this, and I'm half Italian. I'm not gonna go out on pasta. Sabrina started her pasta dough immediately. She's gonna knead it right now. She's gonna allow enough time for resting. Oh, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> when you work the pasta dough, what you're really doing is getting that gluten in the flour to come out, and it makes it very, very elastic, so then you can roll it out when the time is right. That's ready to rest. I'm gonna prove that I'm a top contender by making a rock and tortellini today. We're gonna do a mushroom, black garlic, pancetta filling. This is love food. It smells good already. I'm making a portobello mushroom anchovy stuffing. I feel really confident. It's a little bit out of the box, but you know what? That's what this competition is all about. Hi there, David. So what kind of tortellini are you doing? Ham and cheese. Obviously with the uh, more refined hams. And I see you're working on the sauce. Basic bechamel, but I like to use like a gooey type of cheese. So mozzarella is the perfect type of gooey cheese. Yeah, you are sweating like a, a good one. <laughs> yeah. Is this normally the way you cook, or this is it just the added pressure? It's the added pressure. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up! Great job, guys. I'm looking at my tortellini. I wish I could have pushed just a little bit harder, but nothing I can do now. Andrew, please bring up your tortellini. This is a tortellini stuffed with portobello mushroom anchovy pesto. What's in the sauce? The sauce is a standard Mornay sauce with mozzarella and some garlic. I like the presentation. It's clean. I like clean dishes, but with flavor. Hopefully this delivers. Well, pasta, perfect. Filling. When you were putting those cooked white anchovies, didn't think it would work. You deliver on that too. Only problem is, it was a little bit dry. The reason was you could put more of that creamy cheese sauce. Christopher, please bring up your tortellini. I'm worried that my filling is dry. I'm worried my presentation isn't impressive enough. And I'm feeling really nervous. So the filling is made of pancetta, sausage, portobello, and artichoke hearts. It's been flavored with garlic, onion, and sage. Well, the shape to me looks terrific. Let's see what they look like inside. A good amount of filling? You happy with that? Yes. Well, the pasta's cooked very nicely. The filling, I find a little subtle but an interesting combination of ingredients. This is quite good. Thank you. Wow. How did you achieve such a beautiful, creamy, light cream sauce? I started with a roux. I used a bit of a white wine reduction in it and mixed with cheese. Wow. It's so velvety. You're a pastry guy, right? That's where you're confident? Yeah. I think it's time you begin to be a little more confident in the savory world because you have a beautiful tortellini here. It's very good. Thank you, Chef. David, please bring your tortellini up here. I call it ham and cheese. There's pancetta, cottuccino, and a little bit of mortadella. Wow. That definitely tastes like a ham and cheese sandwich. This is Master Chef Canada. It's ham and cheese. It lacks excitement. David. There are a couple of things that I think you have gone astray on. The filling. It's very big in the mortadella end of things, which is a very rich meat. You know, at this stage of the game, I want to see elevated flavors. If this dish ends up sending you home, will you have regrets with the decision you made not to be safe up in the gallery? No. Let's hope it doesn't send you home. Cody, please bring your dish up to the front. 
So this is a tortellini that is stuffed with pancetta, a trio of mushrooms that also has chives in there. I love the plate that you've chosen. Ideal for such a pasta dish. These are quite small. Yes, sir. They're a little smaller than a typical size tortellini. You've cooked the tortellini perfectly. Filling is flavorful. What's the flavoring in the sauce? Black garlic, sherry, and shallots. It could be a little bit more acidic, a little more white wine. It'll just help clean the flavors. But all in all, not bad. OK. Thank you. Sabrina, please bring up your dish. I kept it classic, but I kept it delicious. I'm confident putting this dish in front of the judges. My tortellini is stuffed with Italian sausage and broccoli. I cooked out some shallots and garlic. Beautiful shaped tortellini here. I'm not surprised, though, because we've seen you with pasta before. And I hold you to a very high standard when it comes to pasta. This is good, but I know you could do better. This is one of the hardest egg dishes that you'll ever have to master. A delicate and savory cheese souffle. Your time starts now! Come on, guys. Let's go, ladies. Come on. So many things can go wrong in a souffle. Every step is critical. They only have three eggs. And the first step is they have to separate them, the whites from the yolks. They cannot break those yolks and contaminate the egg white. Otherwise, those egg whites just won't whip. There are many ways to separate an egg white from egg yolk. Miranda used her hand, and that's exactly what I would do. With three eggs, no mistakes, use your hand. That's definitely a home-cooked mistake to use the eggshells to separate your whites from your yolks, because those eggshells are like tiny little teeth. They're very jagged. A souffle relies upon the whisked egg whites to rise that whole dish. So if you don't whip your egg whites enough, it will be flat. It's do or die, and I can't go home right now. I have too much riding on this, so this has to be perfect. So I think what they should be doing next is starting to prepare their souffle base, measuring out their dry ingredients, getting a pan on the stove top, melting down some butter, adding the flour to that butter, making your base roux and then slowly add the milk to that pan, whisking and stirring constantly. Nice job, Miranda. Good job, looks great. Savory souffles are even harder to make than sweet souffles. Especially a cheese souffle for the simple reason cheese is very dense and heavy. And that's why this is ultra tricky. Look, 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 Miranda's souffle is going in the oven. I'm ready, chef. It's uh, raised nicely. Great looking souffle. Look at that. When it shakes like that, that just shows it is so light and fluffy. That's why they don't last for long. No. <laughs> I can smell the cheesiness. Very rich and flavorful in, in, in by the nose. It's time to taste. Okay. After three grueling cooks, you absolutely nailed this. Oh, my God. Look at that. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Oh, my God. Oh. Miranda, your mother is incredibly proud of you right now. We want to see you use your luxury cheese in three distinctly different ways. You will have 75 minutes. For the first dish, I was thinking kind of like chips and dip. That's what the potatoes made me think of. So I'm making gorgières. Gorgières are like a savory cream puff. And then I have an idea, like broccoli and cheese, man. It's like so classic. So crispy cheddar and broccoli. And then I'm just going to finish it off with a tart tatin. So to make a tart tatin, you put apples into a good hot cast iron pan with butter and sugar and let them caramelize. Then the pastry crust goes on top and then into the oven for it to finish off baking. Oh, right. Tell me, what are you making? I'm doing kind of a riff on the blue cheese dip that you would get for buffalo chicken wings. You know, that celery blue cheese kind of flavor. I'm going to turn that into a soup today. Blue cheese soup? Yeah. And then second, I'm going to do a butternut squash and blue cheese ravioli. And then for dessert, uh, I'm going all out with a blue cheese cheesecake with a honey fig and ginger 
combo. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit concerned that you right now are biting off a little more than you can chew. I'll show you, chef. You know, I'm definitely the hardest worker in the room. Good luck. <laughs> so what's your plan? I'm going to start off with a oyster mushroom mac and cheese. OK. Then I'm doing a Brussels sprout and pomegranate goat cheese salad. The final course is going to be a pear and goat cheese mousseline. Which of these applications will present the biggest challenge? This uh, mac and cheese. The mac and cheese? What? Yeah. The, why? Just making sure the flavor of the goat cheese gets into that sauce. Good luck. Thank you. For the broccoli and cheese, I have put in butter, breadcrumbs, and a whole bunch of the cheddar. And on top of that, I layer the broccolini. Five minutes, only five minutes left. For the tart tartin, I've added a bit of cheddar to my crust. It has like a nice brown on it. I feel hopeful. Holy heck. That's good, that's good. 10, 10 9, 8, 8, 7, 6, 6 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Heads, heads up. up. Wow. I know it's not up to me, but it sure would be cool if this were awesome enough to get me to the finale. I've made cheddar gougeres, and I've made a crispy cheddar broccoli with some bacon, and a tart tartin with a cheddar pastry. Jennifer, you love cheese, don't you? <laughs> that is true, chef. I like the concept. You took simple things, and you added cheese to it. And this is a take, I guess, on cheese and broccoli, right? Yes, chef. The cook is perfect. You get that sweetness coming from the broccoli, and then you get that sharp hit from the cheese itself. You got the balance of flavor, the seasoning, it's right. Well done. Thank you, chef. I get to try your apple tatine. Let's see how this tatine cuts. That's a good sound. What I see is a nice, light, golden color on that pastry. It is very, very good. That apple has become so molten and soft, and there's enough of that savory cheese element that adds just a touch of saltiness to it. This is an excellent rendition of a classic French tatine. So tell me about these gougeres. I was trying to capture some of that potato-y flavor near the rind, so it's in the batter. And then I think chips are always best with dip, so it's just some spicy honey and uh, some grapes and pine nuts. Question here is, is there enough of that beautiful cheddar in your gougeres? I think so, chef. I'm not too sure you really nailed it. But technically, these are very textbook. They're airy, they're light. Mm -hmm. I just want more of that cheese. OK. I started off with uh, Brussels sprouts and pomegranate vinaigrette over a bed of fluffed goat cheese, oyster mushroom mac and cheese with truffle oil, and uh, goat cheese mousseline with pine nuts and poached pears. I can't resist having a macaroni and cheese. I'm going to take a really big bite. That's very nice. First, the pasta cooked to perfection, OK? Al dente. And that great owl, it's a very, very mild cheese. But this seasoning, perfect. Wow, thank you. I am going to tuck into those Brussels sprouts. Let's see how this combination works. Your Brussels sprouts could have done with a little bit more charring in the pan. OK. Other than that, this is a knockout little dish. Seriously? It has flavor from the bitter notes that you get with the Brussels sprouts, but then the creaminess of that gorgeous ash-aged goat cheese just sort of wraps around that Brussels sprout and says, I love you. Thank you, chef. I'm going to try the poached pear. What did you poach it in? I poached it in honey. Is this what you envisioned? No, I actually wanted some crumble. Well, how come that didn't make it onto the plate? Time. Time? Yeah. Time escape. First time time has really uh, hit me. It has a lot of complexity to spicing in the pear. The goat cheese, though, doesn't pop out as much as I want it to. I like the flavors. However, I know you wanted a crumble of puff pastry on this pear. It would have given it that extra little umph. 
I'm really hoping that it shows the judges how far that I've come in this competition. So Andre chose for you the Tiger Blue. He did. You got three elements on the plate. The first one is uh, my take on a blue cheese dip. It's a soup with uh, celery and then added some blue cheese in there. Next, I have a butternut squash and blue cheese deep fried ravioli. The last one is blue cheese with creme fraiche cheesecake with a ginger simple syrup. Interesting approach. I'm going to try the soup. The soup, you say, is a celery base which is a challenging ingredient to make a soup from. Just because there's a lot of water content to it, I find the thickness of the soup to be on the thinner side. I think you could have sweated down some onions, added more of the celery, and then blitzed everything just to give it some viscosity, some thickness. Although the cheese has a really nice note. There's no doubt there's blue cheese in there. Josh, thank you. Okay. Walk me through how you made this ravioli. The filling is a roasted butternut squash, nutmeg, and a little blue cheese. And then I deep fried it, drizzled it with honey, and a yogurt and blue cheese sage cream underneath. I like the flavors inside the ravioli. A little more of that blue cheese inside would have helped it to really pop and honor the tiger blue, which was what this challenge was all about. You made a cheesecake many times, right? Uh, I've only made one no-bake one at home. I've definitely never made a blue cheese cheesecake, for sure. OK. You got a nice cross hair. It's not too thick. It's very uniform. Can't wait to sink my teeth into this. It's very good. I definitely get the blue cheese, which is very important because that's what you're paying homage to. This is very smooth and it's not grainy. Very good job. Thank you, Chef. You will have 60 minutes to make us a stunning dessert. There are six elements on my plate. One of the elements is black olive pistachio dark chocolate bread. I have to get that bread made, because from start to finish, it takes an hour. Hi there, Lynn. Hi, Chef. Can you walk me through each component of your dessert, please? I have uh, pistachio brittle. My mom cooks brittle, and she puts it in tins, and that's what people want for Christmas. Whoa. I also have a mascarpone mousse. This is an olive oil savory bread. We all love bread. French people love bread, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I'm making glazed apricots, and that will be served alongside Chateau de Bourgogne. Sounds like you've got a lot to deal with. Yes, chef. And if there's anyone who can pull it off, I'm going to guess it's going to be you, Lynn. Thank you, chef. Lynn is already finished. My dessert's a plate on a cheese plate. It has homemade chocolate olive bread, pistachio brittle, a mascarpone mousse, candied apricots, and my favorite cheese, Chateau de Bourgogne. Well, then, this is an intelligent dessert. The chocolate bread with the pistachio and the olive goes very nicely with that salty cheese. And the apricot, that's delicious. This is a plate I would like to share with my friends. I am making fancy ants on a log. A traditional ants on a log is you take a log of celery, you fill it with peanut butter, and then top it with raisins. It's a fun way to eat some vegetables. <laughs> Growing up, this was a snack that I had in my school lunch, and I just didn't think there was anything cooler than ants on a log. Jennifer. Hello, Chef. Ants on a log. So how are you going to make it great? This version is with blue cheese, a celery juice vinaigrette, and pork poached eggs. I really want it to look like a bit of a sculptural art piece that you get to eat. Yeah, well, you have always inspired us and impressed us with your beautiful plate. Thanks so much, Chef. And don't let those ants run loose, eh? OK. <laughs> We only have 10 minutes left before we start to taste your first course. We are moving. Time is the most important ingredient in this kitchen. Jennifer, what's next? I'm going to make a blue cheese mousse. Way to stay focused. You got it. I still have to do so many other components. Almost, almost, almost. My brain is just in this mode. Good job, Jennifer. Good job. Everything has to be beautiful, because this is such a simple dish. 
More salt. I want all of the bites to be perfect and all of the bites to be just a little different. Okay, here we go. One minute, That's one good. minute. You got this, come on. Nice. That looks amazing. Wow. Thanks, guys. Looks fabulous. Thank you. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hands up. Next is Jennifer's appetizer. Fancy ants on a log made of pork poached figs, a celery brunoise, and a blue cheese mousse. She has taken a very childlike dish and elevated it to restaurant quality. I look at it and I can't wait to tuck into it. It seems almost simple in the beginning, but once you taste it, you realize the complexity, the fine detail, and the finesse to it. In there, you get so many complex textures. I get the crunch from the, the walnut and the celery. And then you have the blue cheese, full of flavor, but it's also balanced. It's very hard to balance blue cheese. There's so many different juxtapositions happening on this plate. It's a really, really smart dish. I mean, this is the kind of dish that you could see in, may I say, a Michelin-starred restaurant. This is just spectacular. We want to see your homemade ricotta deliciously showcased in this stunning handmade ravioli in an irresistible sauce of your choice. We also want to see what is going on here. Nudie. First, I have to kick off by making the ricotta cheese. So ricotta is cream, milk, and lemon juice. I like to put a pinch of salt in mine. You bring those ingredients to a boil. A little bit more, baby, just a little bit more. You add the lemon juice, and then it will slowly start to curdle because of the acidity from the lemon juice. Oh, it's curdling, it's curdling. Now, remove it off the heat, let it set, so those curds start to form, then you can strain it off to let the whey drop out. Once they've done the ricotta cheese, they then need to work on their pasta. So what are you actually gonna be using to put in the ravioli then? Uh, ricotta with a little bit of mushroom, chef. Uh, so you're bulking it up with a bit of mushroom. Yeah. As long as you have that right balance, the mushroom doesn't overpower that ricotta. Yes, chef. it's a fairly simple, straightforward pasta. I'm just rolling out my pasta now and I need to stuff it. I'm making three colored ravioli that's stuffed with ricotta, parmesan, and provolone in a creamy velouté sauce. Now they have to start in nudie. Nudie are a really light but hearty dumpling. It's not a gnocchi, it just should be like a little cheese pillow. The other thing they then need to do when we start the sauce is they're going to serve. For my ravioli, I'm going to be doing a white wine cream sauce. Just something really simple. It's all about balance and harmony. For the ravioli, I'm gonna do a brown butter lemony sauce with a little bit of anchovy in there. And for the nudie, I'm gonna do a tomato sauce because I want the ricotta to come out. 10, 9, 8, 7, six, come on, come on. 5, 4, 3, 2, one, hands up! Wow. This is your ravioli? Yes. It's a white wine sauce, and I finished it with some cream. What do you think about the way this looks? I definitely think I could have gotten more ricotta in it. Hmm. It's supposed to look like a pillow. It looks more like a bed sheet. Not the desired effect, is it? No. Hmm. The texture is amazing. Thank you. The sauce is very light, it's very fragrant. The only problem, there's almost no ricotta. Okay. And this was supposed to be about ricotta. Yeah. Thank you. What's in the sauce? Capers, anchovies, chili flakes, olives, and tomatoes. I tried to keep it very simple. Tell you one thing, sauce is beautiful, but I'm not as impressed with the nudie. 
You know, this is about ricotta cheese. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I taste a lot of flour. I don't really taste the cheese at all. You went out on a limb and pushed to do three different colors, and you succeeded incredibly well. Thank you. So tell me what you have in the sauce and what's in the ravioli. So inside the ravioli, there are three cheeses, the ricotta. There's also a little bit of Parmesan and provolone. The sauce is a velouté with white wine and cream. I think the ravioli is, is nicely done. There's a decent amount of filling in there. I think it's just a little too much cheese when you wish to showcase one of the most delicate and simplest of cheeses. I can tell that this was made by someone who doesn't like cheeses. You know, you're asked to do a beautiful ricotta cheese, and you did it. And that nudie, cheesy, light, fluffy, very, very nice. The bad news is you managed to overwhelm a beautiful nudie with too much of the pesto. Nice, but too much. So you used every last bit of ricotta to create these two dishes. Yes, chef. You definitely achieved that beautiful, pillowy, fluffy look. The raviolis are generous, but what's happening inside? Hmm. I can see ricotta in here, but is it gonna come through in the taste? Ravioli is good. I can taste the ricotta. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Matthew. Hi, Chef. It's a good looking dish. Has a little rustic approach. I do find the nudie a little on the small side for my liking. Great tasting sauce. Nice freshness to it, very clean. And whilst the ricotta is there, it is very, very subtle. And I think the fact that you were running low on ricotta cheese maybe forced you to cut them smaller. I think had you cut them a little bigger, it may have stood up just a touch more. Yes, sir. You think you aced your ravioli? The brown butter sauce, I, I really like it. Where is the brown butter sauce? There's no real sauce here anywhere. That's a bit of a problem. The pasta's perfect. Thank you. The cheese filling is fantastic. Thank you. But there's no real sauce. You know what you should have done mm -hmm. is use some of the water from the pasta into the pan mm -hmm. and basted it that way. Added just a little knob of butter. Okay. And folded that in. Okay. And that would have given you the sauce that you needed. It's definitely not the Mary that we have come to expect. Mary, Hi. which of the two dishes are you most proud of? I'm most proud of the nudie. I like how bright it is. They look wonderful. The color, your little drizzle of, basil was that a oil. basil oil? Yes. That's a beautiful size. Thank you. Of a nudie. Feathery like. The sauce, the freshness, just that hint of garlic. No misstep there. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. You know, I love the concept of Mary's elevated portion. Borscht is typically a hearty red beet soup, but I'm making golden beet borscht. Mary's a master at taking classic traditional food ideas and elevating them and giving them a little bit of a twist. I'm also making beet cured trout. Typically, when you're curing fish, you need 24 hours to really get the flavors in there. I don't have that, so I need to juice the beets and really bump up the flavor in the marinade. The raw beet juice could be a bit harsh, a bit too earthy, so I hope she gets that right balance. Thank you so much, Mary. Right? 
Hi there, Mary. Hi, Chef Michael. How are you? So you've chosen to do borscht. I have. And this is not any ordinary borscht, though. It's going to be served cold, but also raw. Exactly. Any concern in slicing that piece of trout nice and thin and evenly? I'm actually doing it in little triangle medallions. It's going to be bright, fun. It's going to look like me on a plate. <laughs> <laughs> look forward to trying it. Thanks, Mary. Thank you so much, Chef. Thank you, Chef. Wow. 15 minutes, Chef. 15 minutes left. Mary is just starting to take her marinated trout out of her beet mixture there, yeah. and that is a messy job. Curing takes sometimes days. The only protein on this plate is that fish, and if it's not cured properly, the dish won't work. Now, her idea was to cure that trout in the beet juice, but I don't think there was enough time to achieve that cure. Pat, she's squeezing some lemon juice onto it now. That'll speed up a little bit more of a cure there. That's a smart move. Mary, please bring your dish forward. This tasting is so different than any I've done before. First off, there's a table. The judges are sitting in front of me. This is super terrifying and legit. <laughs> I did a take on borscht. There's little pillows of a horseradish goat cheese, beet cured trout, and caraway breadcrumb. I suggest we all dig in. Mary, this trout is a little flat in flavor. The cure didn't fully sort of take place. But what I really love about this, that acidic hit that you get, absolutely wonderful. Works really well with the earthiness of those beets. Love the bright color. It is borscht in a very modern kind of way. This is sort of new, energetic, vibrant thinking. Overall, a great dish. Well, Mary, it's colorful. It's fresh. The taste to me was just right. The trout, the cream, and that crunchy crumb all adds complexity and balance to this dish. Thank you very much. When you eat everything together, the goat's cheese, the soup, the herbs, the trout, all the textures, all the flavors, they just sing. It's really delicious. Thank you.